Hi everyone, welcome back to Music Pro Rex. For today's set, I'm taking you back to the classical period where we'll talk a little bit about and hear a small segment from the French composer Hector Berlioz. So Hector Berlioz was a French composer of the early Romantic period. His most famous composition is Symphonie Fantastique and it was written in 1830 when Berlioz was 26 years old. And what Symphony Fantastique is, is this massive five movement program symphony that is dedicated to exploring Berlioz's obsession with his emotions. And it's subtitled Episodes in the Life of an Artist. And it's a story that resembles Berlioz's life imitating his art. So now that you know a little bit about Berlioz, let me give you some background that inspired this composition. So at 17 years old, Berlioz arrived in Paris and he attended concerts, he attended the theater, and in 1827 there was a traveling troupe from England that was performing Shakespeare's Hamlet. Berlioz attended and that is where he saw Harriet Smithson as she played Ophelia. And when Berlioz saw Harriet, he was head over heels falling in love at first sight. Now during this time period, the telephone wasn't invented yet, so if you wanted to talk to somebody, you either did it face to face, you wrote them a letter, or you expressed it through art. Well, Berlioz couldn't bring himself to approach Harriet, so instead he spent two years in this emotional turmoil longing for her return. And when she did return, they happened to be in the same building, and Harriet noticed Berlioz, but not in a good way. She recognized him as being her stalker, because that is essentially what he did. And to make things worse for Berlioz, he found out that Harriet was in this relationship with her manager, so this perfect image that he had of her turned sour, and music was his outlet to express that raging fire burning through his heart. And to make a long story short, Harriet and Berlioz eventually met and got married, but that's all I'm going to say about that. So now that you have some context behind Berlioz's obsession with Harriet, let me break down each of the movements because it all coincides with the segment that we'll be listening to today. So the first movement in Symphony Fantastique is a tune that Berlioz composed when he was a teenager. And it's a reflection of his experience, his first experience with rejection. Because when he was 12, he fell in love with and proclaimed that love to his neighbor, Estelle, who was 18 years old. So he was 12, she was 18, and she laughed at him, basically saying, you know, you're, you're a kid, you're 12, what do you know of love? This is just a crush, keep on moving. And that destroyed Berlioz. And you hear that in the first movement of Symphony Fantastique. It's a reminder of his past suffering of passions and dreams. And then the second movement comes in and now it's Berlioz's fixed idea. It's his obsession with Harriet. So in the story, the artist is at a party and there's everyone just dancing and waltzing around Berlioz. And he's just standing there, just watching Harriet from afar, just catching glimpses of her because that's what he did. He stalked her. Now, this is where the third movement comes in and the story kind of takes a turning point because the artist imagines himself countryside, listening to two shepherds do this back and forth call and response and a storm arises and one of the shepherds fails to respond, leaving the other one in silence. And that is supposed to be a representation of this emotional backlash of anger that Berlioz felt towards Harriet because he has imagined that his beloved has rejected him. And that's where the fourth movement comes in and now the story has taken a brutal turn because the artist has now dreamed that he has murdered his beloved. So he's marching to the scaffold of his execution and not only does he die, but he is dehumanized because he's now the subject of public humiliation. 
And this is where the fifth and final movement comes in. So in the story, the artist has died and he has now awoken in hell where he is surrounded by demons and witches and ghosts and gargoyles. And they're all very happy to see Berlioz's arrival. And then here comes Harriet. But this beautiful perfection of an image that Berlioz once had has now transformed into this grotesque looking witch. Now earlier I mentioned musical elements, right? So while Berlioz uses mu musical elements all throughout uh, the symphony to express his emotions, this one is my favorite. So in the beginning, he uses violins to do this like descending, ascending arc. And they do this little like And what that's supposed to be is laughter. So Harriet is laughing at Berlioz saying like, ha ha ha, like even in death, even in hell, you still can't have me. And Berlioz uh, utilizes uh, the clarinet in its highest register and that is supposed to represent this like devilish like taunting uh, Harriet is mocking Berlioz. Now one more thing that I'm going to say before we get into the music is that Berlioz also utilizes what's called the Dies Irae. And what that is, is this old Gregorian plain chant that was written in the 13th century. And it's this melody that uh, represents um, grim moments or even death. So it was created uh, to be used for funerals. And Berlioz takes it to a whole new level. So if you're a horror fan or a movie buff, I'm sure you're going to appreciate it when you hear this. It's a four, it's four sets of notes. And in the, the uh, segment we'll be listening to today, the tuba starts it off. And um, if, if you hear it and you recognize it, let me know where you've heard it from. Comment below. I'd really like to see because it's been used in so many different films, but there is one particular horror film where it is most popularized. So here we go. Let's get into the music. Uh, here is the Aurora Orchestra as they are adorned with these festive masks to set the tone. Playing it by heart is Dreams of a Witch's Sabbath from Symphony Fantastique, composed by Hector Berlioz.
performance from the Aurora Orchestra and Nicholas Cullen. We said they were going to bring this piece to life and that they certainly did. To life and to this illuminated inferno at the end of that orchestral theatre version of the Symphonie Fantastique. You know, Berlioz himself wanted to stage this piece, but his idea was to put the orchestra behind the gauze to make them invisible. I prefer Aurora Orchestra's version, which was due to the concept and script from Jane Mitchell, who's Aurora's own creative director, and also the principal flautist tonight. And she co-directed this production with James Bonus. <laughs> but yes, the players look like they've been on a trip to hell and back. And I think so have we with them. It was a truly, truly magical interpretation, visually and musically. So many illuminations. Here's the actor Matthew Painter, who's given the role of Berlioz, bestowed on him at the start of the evening and inhabiting Hector throughout that performance.